Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Unsexy Church Podcast. This is episode 15, and we're talking about calling, specifically pastoral calling. How do you know you're called to ministry? We'll answer that question on this episode, or at least do our best to do so. Are, Bob, we, ha- are we really on episode 15? Yeah, I think. Kara? Yeah. 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 She said confidently. That was very confident. How are you doing today? Uh, it's a day. It's a, it's a good day. I'm glad to be alive. God's good. So it's a good day. It's a Thursday. We're trying to record two episodes today, full disclosure. Not at the same time. Not, you know, simultaneously. Correct. Correct. But yes, we are. So. Yeah. Um, mug of the week? Should we start? Should we start How else can you possibly start other than mug of the week? I forgot two mugs. And so my wife coming here today brought two mugs for me. So here's what I've got. On this first episode, which I'm going to replace whatever's in this mug with the other mug in about 20 minutes. But on this first episode, I've got a Missouri mug. It's got the Missouri outline. It looks kind of like stone. Here, listen. Yeah, you're not going to be able to tell because there's something in it. But um, it, it, it's, it's the outline of Missouri, and it's got a heart in the center. I don't, I don't know if that's supposed to just represent like Jeff City because Jeff City's in the center. We're not from Jeff City. My wife's from Columbia, close to the center. Um, but it's a pretty sweet mug. I don't know I like where it. either of those two places are. Yeah. I'm not that familiar with the grand state of Missouri. I think this is probably from one of those shops that's like a local, you know, love your state kind of sure, store. Sure, sure, pretty sure. cool. Um, I actually think, you know what? I think my wife got this at Golden Apple Boutique in Fayette, Missouri. I went from not specific to really specific. Very specific. I, I think that's where it's from. Nice plug there. Um, someone she knows that actually works there. It's a small local business, so mom leads it. Uh, so. I think that's where that's from. I could be totally wrong. Very cool. It's probably from Walmart or something like that. Yeah, exactly. So just so everybody understands, I think we've said this before, but you are from Missouri. This is your home state. So you have a great deal of love for this mug and your state and your heart. I have no ties to Missouri. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yes, yes. I love Missouri. Actually going to visit Missouri in a week. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. And our worship pastor, Darren, is also from that same state, although he pronounces it differently than you do. He's still being sanctified. Yes. Well, he pronounces aren't we it, are. He, he pronounces it Missouri. Missouri. And no one in Missouri, unless you're from, I'm sorry, this, this sounds derogatory, from the backwoods, <laughs> pronounces Missouri, Missouri. Well, it's Missouri. I, 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 <laughs> not to get off, you know, off topic, which we're not even on yet, uh, but my wife and I did meet somebody from that state this last weekend, and they introduced themselves as coming from Missouri. Where are they from? <laughs> Northern Missouri. So, really? Yes. That's actually really surprising. Yeah. Okay. So Interesting. He, he went into a whole thing about the Civil War and did all you that. Him to, did you lead him to Christ? You know, we worked on it. But <laughs> it was, so, no. No, I did not. I did not feel called to at the time. Hey, you know, uh, in our culture today, because we're way off base already, uh, I saw a funny tweet this morning. Uh, Elon Musk bought Twitter. Right. I'm not touching hot button topics. Really? I haven't heard this. Elon Musk. It's all over the news. Yeah, oh, I'll, I'll read the news sometime. Someone, someone jokingly said it was a pastor. He said, I wish Elon uh, Musk would buy Walmart so there would be actual people working at the counters. I thought that was hilarious. Very nice. Because I am not a self-checkout fan. So mm-hmm. it has nothing to do with work ethic and all that stuff. It's just I hate self-checkout. I want, I want to actually like take my items, put them on a conveyor belt, and have people scan them for me and then put them in bags. So props to Publix for actually bagging your groceries. We are chasing some fuzzy little rabbits today aren't we yeah uh-huh. okay all right it was a hunter it was a great it was great good, good all right hey pastoral calling or calling in general to ministry uh i think there's an idea that we want to somewhat debunk um and that idea is that if god calls me into ministry i will have some sort of specific revelation some people you know liken calling to ministry as seeing certain signs in the sky, the way that the clouds formed. And sometimes people feel like they're not called into ministry or couldn't be called into ministry unless they receive some sort of special revelation. Uh, For me, I remember describing my call into ministry for quite some time uh, as some kind of ecstatic moment. And I think it was kind of out of fear that I wouldn't be um, taken seriously if I didn't have that some sort of ecstatic moment of calling into ministry. So uh, the word used is calling most often into pastoral ministry or into ministry. Is that the best word? How do we see pastoral or the calling into pastoral ministry in the scriptures? We want to kind of talk through that. Any thoughts you have? Yeah, I, w- I would say most of the people that I know uh, that I've heard testimonies of that have felt a calling into the ministry uh, they do not have that experience that you've just described, this mystical aha moment where the par- clouds parted and mm. you know the sign dropped out of the sky. It was a longer process. Mm. And I think the scripture 
would would refer to it more as aspiring to ministry than calling to ministry because you may feel a personal aspiration to want to do something but that doesn't mean you're qualified to do it nor necessarily called or affirmed by the church to do it so i think uh, i think the word that um uh, first timothy uses is, is to aspire to to the ministry aspire means to desire in one's heart right, right. so uh, wh- why is the word calling so common it do you think it's possible that some of these um, desires for ecstatic moments, um, special revelation comes from looking at Old Testament prophets, say Isaiah, for example, God reveals himself to Isaiah, seraphim, cold in the tongue, who will go for me? I will go for you. And, and almost to personalize your calling and make it unique, people feel like they need to look back and have a similar moment. Yeah, an Old Testament prophet kind of calling. Yeah, and I think calling in the Old Testament for prophets was different than what we see as aspiration for pastors in the New Testament. You mentioned 1 Timothy chapter uh, 3. Very helpful. If one aspires to the office of overseer, which is the office of elder, which is also the office of of pastor, he aspires to a good thing, right? And so uh, men, uh, as defined by Scripture, uh, who are qualified, which we'll get into in a minute, um, ought to, many men ought to aspire to this noble task. Um, that doesn't mean that every man uh, should serve in this um, space, mm-hmm. but it, it should be somewhat, I would even argue, um, somewhat common for a man in a local church serving the Lord greatly to aspire to this office, or at least to aspire to the qualifications in this office, whether or not they actually feel called or um, aspire specifically to the position. Yeah, I think it's important that we aspire to it. Uh, I, I think it's very important that should you follow this path that, that, that God leads you down, if it, if it is in fact God leading you in this direction, and you become a pastor, this understanding of God's calling on your life is paramount to mm-hmm. success, to sustainability within the ministry, knowing that this is what God has called you to do and you can't do anything else and be where God has desired for you uh, to be. Uh, but this calling, this aspiring, isn't to a position of prominence; it's a position to service. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, you know, we're told that it is—it's uh, a fine work or a honorary, uh, an honorable work that we are uh, called to. It's the, the person is not the one that is honored; it's the task that is honored. Mm-hmm. And we should aspire to be this person uh, that is Christ-like that God uses to lead the body of Christ. It's a—it's a great aspiration to have. Not everybody has it. Yeah. But it is a great aspiration. And one with the aspiration, if there's multiple people with the aspiration, they ought to consider it greatly for the task that God has for them. Because at the end of the day, those that um, inhabit this office will give an account to God for how they led in this in this place. So there's a lot of factors of consideration in personal aspiration. Mm-hmm. So we would argue probably the word calling better understood aspiration, um, but that, that's it doesn't end there. Um, so I, I would say there's probably a threefold understanding of calling that we ought to consider or of aspiration we ought to consider. Mm-hmm. The first being what we've discussed, personal aspiration. The second being character qualification. And the third being churchwide affirmation, that a church recognizes that God is calling you or setting you apart for this position and affirms the fact that you meet the character qualifications and that you would be good in this role in this local church. So first, personal aspiration. Let's look at character qualification because – I think this is really important. This is talked about more than the other two. Um, what qualifies someone to be a pastor? Well, you have clear teaching in Scripture, 1 Timothy 3, Titus 1, that, that says here are the qualifications, and most of them are character qualifications as opposed to um, the things that you actually do, which is focus on Scripture in, in both of those passages. Um, but before we continue on that, I, I would go back to the aspiration aspect of it just for a moment, mm-hmm. and then we'll come back to the qualification part of it. Um, I, I think you're wise uh, to, to describe a calling as this three kind of compartments that come together, mm-hmm. the personal aspiration that is then followed up with character qualification and then church affirmation. I think that's the calling. Mm-hmm. It, but I think it starts with this aspiration idea, this idea that – is God calling me to do something different in the life of the church? Is he calling me to a position of leadership Mm -hmm. within the life of the church? And I want to go back to that because I think in my personal experience, in most of the the brothers in Christ that I serve with or know, that was not a a light switch that went off. That was a process by which God kind of walked us through with the people that he put into our lives, 
uh, with the events, the activities that we participated in, where you just began to sense, okay, maybe God wants me to do something here. Mm. Uh, and so I, I want to make sure we're clear that this, this personal calling or aspiration for most people is a long process that God yeah. uses different things to get us to begin to think this, to consider this along the way. Not so much a dramatic experience. So over time, you've been discipling guys. You've been serving in your local church. Someone's recognized that you have giftings in certain areas, mm -hmm. that you're a man of integrity and could be in places of leadership. Um, and over time, you begin to feel kind of an, an urge, an aspiration to serve the church. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, a yeah. long process. Of yeah. that. And, and when you've been given those opportunities, you really find fulfillment, personal, spiritual fulfillment in, in carrying out those things. And, yeah. and you see that over time. So I just wanted to go back to that real quick. That's good. But it doesn't really matter if you aspire to it if you're not qualified for it. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're currently preaching through the book of Titus, uh, and the front end of it is Paul s telling uh, Titus, I left you in Crete to set straight the things that were crooked within the church, that are twisted in the church. And the first step in that was to appoint qualified elders, mm -hmm. people who met the qualifications of the task of being a spiritual leader in the body of Christ. So you asked, what are the qualifications? Well, I would point you to first. Titus, or first Titus, Titus um, chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. Uh, and then, of course, we already mentioned First Timothy chapter 3, uh, yeah. which both are uh, almost identical in their, in their laying out of the qualifications. And again, they're character qualifications. Yeah. We want to encourage the reader probably to even go check those out, Absolutely. right? Because we're probably not going to read through both of them. So go check those out. Um, a lot of those qualifications, you'll notice there's some interesting things missing. There's not... Um, a certain amount of schooling, though schooling is potentially helpful. Yeah. Um, there's not um, even the, the qualification to have to preach every week or whatever it might be. The, the ability to preach is very, very helpful in that role. Um, in fact, a lot of the qualifications uh, are things that all believers should aspire to. Absolutely. Um, they really deal with uh, one's life, one's leadership, and one's love, how one manages their love for uh, God, their household, and their church. Um, leadership, is someone hospitable? Is someone able to teach? And then love, do you have a kind and gentle and self-controlled manner about you? Um, I think it's really, really important. Uh, the only one that's kind of unique uh, that all believers can't aspire to or won't necessarily aspire to or won't be able to do is able to teach and um, to not be a believer for a short amount of time. We want to be careful not to put someone in a prominent position too quickly. Um, so in that way, those who inhabit this position are examples of what all in the church pretty much should be, right? You mentioned something I think was really important there. Um, there's a common phrase that's around today that God doesn't um, call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Um, and while that may be true of a believer uh, or a person's salvation, uh, that you don't you know, qualify yourself to be saved, to be called by God unto salvation, um, one cannot just claim calling without also having the qualifications to back that calling. God is not putting someone in a position that does not meet these qualifications. In fact, these qualifications preclude people from serving in that position who shouldn't be. Absolutely. So someone can't just say, well, well, I, I felt the call. I, I, I felt this, saw this, did this. Um, I know this is what God wants me to do. Well, hold up. Do you meet the qualifications? If not, no. Right. right. And, and it's not also not a job. Right. So there are some that would look at the, the job of a pastor or a minister and go, well, I have the skill set to do that. I can do that. I can make a living doing that. That's not what we're talking about. You, you're not your qualifications aren't your education, as you mentioned, your talent level, your personality. None of that is your primary qualification. Your primary quali qualification is Christ likeness and fulfilling these qualifications that we see laid out in in Scripture. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you can aspire to it all day. You want the the. The, the position, but unless you are qualified, uh, you're not called. In the qualifications, there is both content of what you would teach, able to teach, and character qualifications. Both. There is not charisma mentioned, mm -hmm. and there is not communication ability mentioned. Those might be helpful, but we've got to be very careful to elevate both charisma and communication ability over content and character, right? 
Um, we've listened to a podcast recently that talked about that. We've elevated charisma over character mm -hmm. way too often in the pulpit. We've got to be careful about that because that is not the qualifications God has given us. We, that, that is a, a wrong focus on entertainment, um, clickbait personalities versus godly men who serve faithfully. Yeah, I, I agree completely. And there are a lot of skills required to do the responsibilities of a pastor. Um, but it, I don't care how skilled you are. If you're not Christ-like, if you're not called by God into the position, it will not work. It will not. It will. It'll fall at some level. So we we must first be qualified in our character of Christ likeness. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we're going to do it perfectly? Of course not. Right. Of course not. Um, it doesn't tell us that we are to be faultless. It tells us that we are to be above reproach. Yeah. That we are we are with integrity seeking after God in all of these areas of our life constantly. Yeah. You want a person that smells like a sheep to use the phrase from a pastor who's written a book. I can't remember who wrote that, but. Smells like a sheep is amongst the local church, serving in the local church, loves the local church, loves its people, cares well for it. And you want also someone who would steward the responsibility to stand before God for how he cares for them, right? Right. Um, and so you don't find that just by looking at someone's resume. You don't. Uh, you ask their church. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Um, third qualification or third uh, part of the, the, the calling that we're looking at is churchwide affirmation. Uh, anything you want to say about that that's helpful um, yeah, I think this part is uh, people of God with the Holy Spirit who can discern and look at your life, and then you, uh, they affirm in your life yeah. what you understand God to be calling you to do. So this is, you know, somebody coming up as, as you're a high school student, and you're kind of wrestling with this, and somebody saying just without you eliciting the conversation, you know, I, I really see something special in you. I, when you did the, the youth sermon that week it was really well done it, it, it's it's a affirmation by the church um, just coming into a believer's life someone feeling the sense of calling aspiring to ministry where the church says we see this in you it's not just you're thinking you are mm. we see it as well we're we're acknowledging that we see god working through you this way yeah and, and i think we're we're a pretty bad judge of our own character and so the church is given to us to say, okay, I do see this kindness that's qual that, that qualifies a pastor in you. Right. I do see this hospitality that you have. Uh, you are able to teach, like you said, s witnessing, seeing the hand of God on your life as you exhibit these characteristics. That's super helpful. Um, the end of First Timothy chapter 5, verses 22 through something else. I can't read that quick. And I, I, I don't need glasses. 24. Um, it talks about you're, in the you're literally wearing glasses right now. I don't. Well, I don't need reading glasses. These oh, aren't reading glasses. Okay. Bad. okay. okay. I can you. pick up the Bible and put it right up to the I'm mic. I'm a literalist. I'm can sorry. you hear it on the mic? There we go. There we go. Um, sorry. <laughs> At the end of First Timothy chapter five, uh, in the context of talking about elders, caring for elders, um, uh, being careful about admitting fault or charges against elders, but doing so if necessary, um, it talks about being careful about laying on the hands. And I would interpret this verse to be talking about be very, very careful to acknowledge and appoint an elder or a pastor in your church as a church body. Be very careful. He even goes to say some sins are conspicuous at first, and so um, some good works are conspicuous at first. And so let, 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 there, let there be time that passes where you see whether or not what they say about themselves is true whether the character is a show for a, a temporary time, because as difficult things happen, sin erupts, right, in people's lives. And so see if they're even keel. See if they're a man, or, uh, a man of integrity. See if they're a, a man who loves his family. Um, and that takes time. So be very careful to lay on your hands and affirm someone to a position of authority. Right. Uh, we have what, what we call ordaining, ordination mm -hmm. processes within the body of Christ. And, and I would encourage that those to be pretty stringent. Um, and in fact, if you get to the process where you're calling an ordination, ordination council, there should have already been a long process of, of yeah. evaluating this person and, and seeing these things in their lives. Uh, and then there's this process by which they're asked questions about their theology and about their mm -hmm. life and those things. Uh, but it is highly important that the church take care, great care in who they appoint and mm -hmm. who they ordain to be leaders um, and to not rush into that, but to take time to see 
the character shown in the actions of somebody's life, mm. uh, what they claim to be, what they are shown out, and how they actually live and minister and love. So talking about the ordination process, so I was ordained at a young age in the church that I was able to serve for two and a half years, Rondo Baptist Church, and um, at the time of my ordination, two of my buddies also got ordained within probably the same year. Praise the Lord for a good youth pastor and a good pastor who instilled um, truth in our lives, and we three felt called in the ministry at different times and different places, not because of one another, um, one another's personal call. But uh, in I got to attend those other ordinations, and they attended mine as well. And in that question and answer process that you talked about, <laughs> we ju- uh, so in, for whatever reason, ordination is held differently. There's not an exact formula in the scriptures for how one ordains uh, another person. Uh, sometimes there's an ordination council who specifically questions the, the guy theologically and character-wise privately. Sometimes it's right in front of the whole church and anybody can raise their hand. Well, that's how it was for the three of us. <laughs> and so though we're not a part of that same current, which this shouldn't have happened, but we're not a part of that congregation. We're just friends with the guy just to cheer him on getting ordained. But well, we raised our hands. Of course. And we asked the most difficult questions <laughs> you can think of. Explain make, the hypostatic uh, union. Explain the hypostatic <laughs> union. Right. Uh, tell me your thoughts between, uh, you know, tithing and offering mm. and why tithing isn't mentioned <laughs> so much in the New Testament. Do you tithe? And so then you're like, ah, oh, okay. You this know is what friends are for. Right? Exactly. And it was funny. It wasn't funny when they asked me the question they asked me, but it was funny <laughs> asking them difficult questions. So... Again, personal aspiration, character qualification, church-wide affirmation, and I think that's actually a logical order. Absolutely. Calling, yeah, I think calling. that is a logical order. And to the young pastor, soon-to-be pastor listening to this, don't feel, as I felt, that you have to elaborate um, extemporaneously about a moment of aspiration or a moment of calling. Uh, when I look back to the time I felt called into ministry— it was at a church camp, uh, like so many people might might say. Uh, I felt the Lord speaking in my life, and when I look back on that, it was uh, um, following a year of discipling other guys, being discipled by my pastor, and after that, I just had a desire, and I think that was the beginning of a desire to serve people in such a way. So. Anything else? I would encourage anybody who is listening who might be feeling this aspiration, this calling. Um, I would seek out the wisdom and counsel and affirmation of other called people, mm. you know, other men, and say, you know, help, walk me through what you went through. Walk me through that process. Ask, do you see any of that in me? Um, and, 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 and maybe s- starting with your local pastor. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yes, starting with your local pastor, your youth pastor, whoever it may be. Um, just say, you know, I, I kind of sense this in my life. Do you see this in my life? And be ready for that answer. You yeah. may not like that answer, but uh, be ready for that. I think that's where you start that process. But if don't go out there on your own and think, okay, I just got to figure this out on my own. Um, there's a lot of good and godly people around. Go to somebody you trust that's already kind of walked through this process and allow them to speak into your life on it. Any kind of books you'd recommend on pastoral calling that you can think of? Oh, wow. Um, not off the top of my head. I'm trying to... So I, just just because of where I'm at in ministry right now, I do have some guys that are interested in calling. And so just because of that, I've got two on, in my head. And I didn't plan to do this. Uh, Dave Harvey, Am I Called? It's white. It's got a telephone on the front of it. And then uh, there's a, a recent one I've, I've used. I've not read it all the way through, but I've read a good portion of it. Uh, I think it's called The Call of a Pastor. And they actually argue for aspiration to be a better understanding of initial calling. Yeah. Uh, and that's by nine marks. I think it's The Call of a Pastor by I thank Jamie Dunlop. I could be wrong, but someone like that. So but it's a nine marks book. It's a nine so marks it's easy book. enough to find. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, anything else? No, it's exciting. I, I think God is calling people out. And so as, as um, he intends to and will continue to. So if in my case, uh, I felt that calling for a while and resisted it because I, I had a different plan. And God just pursued. I don't know that he would have always pursued, but he, he pursued. And went, the way he pursued was through things in my life and through people in my life. And mm. fortunately, uh, I woke up enough uh, to, to, to finally listen. Um, so if you feel this sense, don't run from it. Pursue it. See, what, And, and, and if, if God takes you down that path to say this is, this is where you're going and it's affirmed uh, both in your qualifications and in, in the church, then it's a great, great blessing. But if you're not called to do it, don't try. Adding to that, just the last thing I would say is I need to be better about recognizing 
people that I might feel are gifted in this role in the life of the local church even today. So I, I would say, you know, in your congregation, keep aware of those that do meet these qualifications that you see might serve as a pastor in the future. Affirm them, encourage them, meet with them, pray for them, go through a book on calling with them, and then maybe see, hey, is there a spot in our church where they might serve? <laughs> Pretty awesome to serve with people. You know who actually have a track record of faithfulness. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's even better uh, if you have that opportunity and someone you don't know, right? Yeah, that's a good uh, word. That's a real good word. Now, of course, I did benefit from you not knowing me when I came here, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve here. But I think that's a huge blessing. Hey, thank you so much for listening to the podcast this week. Uh, make sure you tune in next week as we talk about another subject. Thank you so much. See you later.